The beef ribs are amazing. And we got so this. Can I have like this part? No. Today we are going on another experimental culinary adventure. We are going to be cooking these beef ribs until they fall apart. Let's get started. I have always been cooking my beef ribs to what I think is perfection. But what if I cook them a little longer until they fall apart? Because I think that might open a lot of doors and a lot of possibilities to what we can do with the meat. If we just cook beef ribs the way they are and they always will be, then it's just boring. We want to get the maximum potential out of these beef ribs. We want to make them special. So cooking them until they fall apart and then see what happens. See what we can do with them. Of course, I selected beautiful beef ribs for this cook. It's a giant piece. Nice and thick, a lot of ribs, ready to be cooked. Look at this beauty. <laughs> it's gonna be tasty. These are our beautiful beef ribs. In the Netherlands, we call it Jacob's Ladder, but it might as well be called Dino Ribs. For our preparation, we need to trim off that silver skin. By taking it off, we're going to allow all of the flavors of the barbecue rub to penetrate the meat. Once we get it nice and cleaned up, we're going to rub it with a little bit of olive oil and it's ready for the rub. Of course, we need to create a delicious and simple beef rub. One part light sea salt, half a part ground black pepper, one eighth part garlic powder, and one eighth part onion powder. Now I'm calling it magic. You might think this rub is a little bit simple, but actually it's genius. It's fantastic. It's perfect for beef ribs. That's why a lot of Texans have been doing salt and pepper only for a long time. Because it's genius. Once these ribs are cooked with this beef rub, they are gonna taste amazing. But also you can match them with anything. And now it's time to fire up our smoker. We lit up our Napoleon smoker and we put it in two chunks of smoke wood. Once that charcoal is fully ignited, we're going to put our smokestack on. Time to put this beautiful creation on our smoker. Put the lid on and let this smoke until it picks up a beautiful mahogany red smoke color. We smoked the beef ribs at a temperature of 140 degrees Celsius for three hours. Look at that color. We're building up a nice bark. Now we wrapped our ribs in butcher's paper and put them back on the grill to cook until they reach a core temperature of 98 degrees Celsius. I thought it might be a good idea to make some homemade tortillas and a homemade salsa to go with our beef ribs. And I don't want to miss out on the opportunity to be cooking in what's going to be my new studio. Yes, it's work in progress, but we're getting close. Isn't it beautiful? For our salsa, I want to use a special technique, the double frying technique of our salsa. First, we're going to be grilling our ingredients or frying them in a shallow fry, chop them up and then fry them again with our finished seasoning. So all of these flavors are getting that double fry and it will make it rich and flavorful. I fired up the sizzle zone on my Napoleon Prestige Pro, put on a pan, a little bit of olive oil in and started frying my garlic. Three cloves is enough. We're looking for a nice brown color. When the garlic's halfway through, we're going to add jalapeno peppers, a large shallot, and we're going to let all of the ingredients fry until they individually get a nice dark color. And we're looking for a good amount of char. Once they're done, we're taking them out and we'll start charring our last ingredients, which is tomatoes. These are five medium sized tomatoes and I want a heavy dark color on them. Once that's done, we're taking out all of the ingredients and moving them over the cutting board to cool off. Now we're going to chop all of these ingredients fine, starting by the tomatoes. The size doesn't really matter that much, but you don't want things to be too chunky. So go at it with a big knife and chop it up. Or if you want to, you can use a blender. When it's all done, it's time for the second fry. 
Our pan is back on the sizzle zone. We're adding more olive oil because this time we want a real fry. First in go the chopped tomatoes. And we're going to let these fry until all of that moisture is disappeared. This may take up to 20 minutes or so, but when it happens and your tomatoes are getting some extra color, it's time to add the rest of your ingredients. Let them keep on frying all together like one big happy family and let the flavors blend. Now add a teaspoon of that beef rub that we made. This is the perfect seasoning to go with that salsa. When all of the moisture has disappeared, we're gonna deep fry it even more, stirring it every minute or so until our salsa becomes nice and dark. This whole process may take up to 20 to 30 minutes. Now put it in a bowl and let the salsa cool down. Being Pitmaster X, I'm gonna give it a quick try. Ooh, that's hot. Ooh, nice and creamy. And a slight burn, just what you need from a salsa. And now there's only one thing left to do. Uh, it's not true, there's a lot of things left to do. <laughs> but I still wanna make these homemade tortillas. And it's very easy. I'm just getting a pack of well, corn flour, which is specifically made for tortilla. And the good thing, it's gluten-free. So all of you gluten-free people out there, make your homemade tortillas with gluten-free tortilla corn flour. Almost every pack on the back has a recipe for making tortilla. So it's very easy. It says here, two cups of a pan, which is this flour, and then two and a half cups of water and a teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna half it because we don't need that much. Just, just me and Morrison, and I don't think Morrison needs 20 uh, tortillas. You want 20 tortillas? You didn't ask. Now, of course, being Pitmaster X, I'm not going to follow the instructions on the package. I'm just gonna eyeball this, and it's gonna work out fine because it's way too easy. It's just flour, water, and a little bit of salt. And once you get this consistency, it's done. Let it sit for five minutes, and then take out your tortilla press, cut out small sheets of baking paper, roll a couple of balls, and then press them into tortillas. And that's how easy this is. And let me just prove you need the baking paper by not using it. See, epic fail. And baking the tortillas is easy. You need a hot pan and gently you let these tortillas go in, preferably a non-stick pan because there's no grease involved. Once they brown up a little bit, you flip them around and keep flipping them around until the moisture is gone and you end up with good looking tortillas. Our tortillas are done, the salsa is done, the beef ribs are done, and hopefully they turned out amazing. Let's get them out of the cooler. Ho, 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 ho. This is one of those exciting times where you're looking so much forward to what's in your package. Oh, they're, oh, they're super, super tender. I think these are ready to fall apart. Look at that bark. These look amazing. But I was feeling, and look, look at this. Oh, they're fall apart tender. I'm not doing anything. They're just falling apart. This actually is perfect for what we're making. This is going to be so good for our tortillas with that beautiful salsa. think outside of the box. You never get to the point where you create something this epic. <laughs> this is looking so good. I had so much fun with this cook. These beef ribs, they're easy to make. Much easier than brisket. And they taste amazing, especially with that rub. Now with this salsa, let's give it a try. I want to put on a lot of salsa. Maybe a little bit more. Whoa, 
Mmm. Mmm. Wee wee. Whoa. Unbelievable. What is this? I just wanted to say, this salsa goes so well with these beef ribs. Didn't Alien make this? It's just mind blowing. It really is mind blowing. Whoa. That dark red deep flavor from that salsa. This is not salsa anymore. Those juicy hearty beef ribs. But what is it? With that nice thick bark of smoke flavor and salt and pepper. It's like ulek, a little bit. Sambal ulek. This is a feast. But it's not. It's still salsa. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. I'm keeping the leftovers this time, Marshall. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> is there something more to whoa? I hate to say this, but the only way to describe this is saying the word that I don't want to use anymore. Umami. I said it. I hate that word. It does something with your, with your tongue that you didn't taste before. It's amazing, but I can't describe it. I just can't describe it. It's like this. It goes together. How much can I take home? If you have made beef ribs already a couple of times and you want to go out on a limb, give this a try. It's freaking awesome. And you guys are going to enjoy it, I'm for sure. So if you enjoyed this video, then give us a big thumbs up and a comment down below. And I want to say a special thank you to our patrons. If you don't know who they are, they're coming scrolled up behind this video. And if you want to become one, go down to the links in the video description. It will tell you everything about it. Thank you for watching and uh, hope to see you guys next time. Until then, eat smakelijk and keep on... Eating beef ribs. Eating beef ribs. Beef ribs are amazing. Oh, we got this. Can I have like this part? No. Deal. <laughs> or maybe I, I take the salsa. No. No? No. Mm. Not the tortillas, not the salsa, not the beef ribs. Oh. I better take that then. I, I really like you, Marshall. No, I'm just gonna take You're my friend. Stuff. No, I, I'm just gonna... I want to give you everything I have, yeah. but not my beef ribs. I'm just gonna pack up the camera then. Eva. It's like that. Yeah, you can have the dog. That's yeah. no problem. <laughs> okay.